Are you looking to turn over a new leaf when it comes to your finances but aren't quite sure where to start? Well, in this video, we're going to be looking at four very basic steps to any financial journey, as well as some tools that can help you out along the way. Hey everyone, this is Kyle from Money at 30, and on this channel, we look at personal finance from a millennial perspective, including money tip videos like this one. It's now been about two years since I made a conscious effort to really focus on my finances and set off on what I call my money journey. While I'd already made a few changes over the years, the start of the journey coincided with my writing about personal finance and sharing what I was learning. Personally, I've really come a long way in the past two years and can now look back at what brought me to this point. In doing so, I feel there have been four main steps that can explain my money journey so far. With that in mind, let's take a look at these four basic steps as well as some app recommendations that can help you achieve these milestones. In my mind, the first major step in any money journey involves looking at your spending, building a budget, and setting your savings goals. When most people decide they want to change their ways and cut back on their spending, they often don't really have a plan for doing so. Furthermore, while common reasons cited for why they want to improve their money habits include not living paycheck to paycheck and being able to pay down debts, it's also important to think of more specific goals that will keep you motivated along the way. One of the first things I recommend doing if you're serious about improving your finances is to take a hard look at your spending. This process can be truly eye-opening, and you might even spot a few places you can cut back off the bat. From there, you can create your first budget, determining how much of your salary will go towards essentials, how much you'll set aside for future savings, and what you'll do with the leftover funds. As I mentioned, this is also a great time to define what you hope to accomplish by saving money, be it living debt-free life, taking a once-in-a-lifetime trip, or maybe saving up for a down payment on a house. Keep in mind that budgets can evolve, so don't feel bad about making adjustments along the way. Additionally, if you're looking for an easy way to set up your budget and monitor it regularly, apps like Mint and Clarity Money can really help you stay on track and assist you in reaching your goals. Just as it's important to know where you're spending your money, it's also imperative that you know what your credit looks like and how to fix it. For those trying to turn their finances around, credit cards may be the furthest thing from their minds as they may have been what got them into trouble in the first place. Even if that is the case, it's still important to know what your credit looks like and find ways to improve it as you continue your journey. As you probably already know, your credit can often dictate the interest rate you'll pay on loans and mortgages, but can also impact your ability to rent an apartment or even secure a job. Not to mention that credit cards can actually be used to help you save money, but only if you use them properly and are able to obtain rewards credit cards, which are usually only available to those with good credit. For all of those reasons, it's definitely in your best interest to check your credit, review your reports for errors, and learn what you can do to improve your standing in the future. There are two sites in particular where you can start this process. The first is annualcreditreport.com where you can obtain official copies of your credit reports for free once each year. Additionally, the popular site and app Credit Karma is also a great resource for keeping tabs on your credit and understanding how to raise your scores. The next step in your financial journey as I see it is learning to be frugal and save money when possible. Frugality is an often misunderstood concept with many assuming it means never spending any money. However, in my mind, being frugal simply means not spending money when there's no need to and instead redirecting those funds towards things that are worth spending on. For example, my wife and I might choose to shop at discount grocery stores like Aldi or Walmart, allowing us to save money we can then spend on things like travel instead. Another misconception about frugality involves extreme couponing. This in particular grew from a popular television show, but how many people actually have the time to find these loopholes and save every penny possible? Similarly, it's important to remember that a coupon is only valuable if it's for an item you actually want and need in the first place. With all that said, there are a few apps that can help you save on essentials and beyond. When it comes to filling your tank, Gas Buddy and Pay with Gas Buddy can save you a few cents here or there. For grocery shopping, the Walmart Savings Catcher can help you get the best prices without hitting up multiple stores. And then there's Dosh, which offers a number of special cashback deals both in-store and online. Personally, I use all three of these to help save money and live as frugally as possible. Finally, as you start to master your money and manage to build up some savings, it may be time to think about investing. If you ask just about any mogul out there, they'll surely tell you that most of their money wasn't made from saving, but by investing. And while you might assume that it takes thousands to start investing on your own, there are now a number of apps and platforms that are making things a lot easier. Among these apps is Acorns, which allows users to set aside their digital spare change and invest in a set collection of stocks and bonds. The service costs a dollar a month, but includes a number of features that can not only help you grow your money, but also understand how investing works. If you want a little more hands-on control over your investments, but still want to start small, you might consider trying Robinhood as well. This app is free to use and allows you to buy stocks without any commissions or fees. Additionally, Robinhood has been rolling out support for trading cryptocurrencies as well as options. Of course, it's very important to note that you should never invest any money you can't afford to lose, even if something seems like a safe bet. 
Similarly, always be sure to research your investments and ensure you're making wise decisions with your money. For more on the basic steps of any financial journey and some more app recommendations, I'm going to have a link to my full article on Dire News in the description box down below. Also, if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment, and be sure to subscribe because we have new videos every week. So thanks again for watching and I will see you next time here on Money at 30.